All right. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Pat Sidmore, and I am the um, Healthy School Specialist. I work in public health, and um, I'm actually located with the Tobacco Prevention and Control Team. And so um, I work, work closely with them. And um, we wanted to uh, d discuss today some resources that the team, uh, the tobacco team has developed in conjunction with the Department of Education and Early Development um, for, for adults um, and kids. There's, there, are, there are resources for adults, kids, and families um, that we're gonna talk about today. And um, it's, uh, it's gonna be obviously really informal. We're a small group, we're, we're recording, we'll put it out so that people can look at it later. But we're, we're gonna really do three things. We're gonna look at this fact sheet that, that's up on the screen right now kind of go over that just quickly. Um, and then um, Sam Samantha Wilson is from the Department of Ed is going to talk a little bit about um, their e-learning system. And one of the things that the tobacco team and the Department of Education and Early Development did was they made an e-learning module for educators. Um, and if you're familiar with the e-learning system in education, um, you can access it there. And if, if for some reason you're not with, with in, in education, you can still access it. Anyway, Sam will talk a little bit about how to do that and show you where it is and answer any questions about that. And maybe even show you some other things that are in there that might be of interest to you. And then finally, we'll actually show um, some of the, um, the e-learning module. We won't do the whole thing. Uh, to sit down by yourself and take it is 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 just um, about 25 30 minutes um, but but Annalisa from the tobacco prevention and control team will will show us some of that and and you can see that you can go in and and watch the whole thing and, and actually go back and pick out resources here and there if you want um, and it's a great thing that you can take by yourself or you can actually take it in a group and we'll talk some more about that but Anyway, um, I'm gonna start with the, the tobacco fact sheet and I'll blow it up here a little bit, but it's really just a two pager. Um, I'm gonna move it over here so I'm not looking to the side. Um, I'll put it in front of me. Um, it, it's really just a two pager. Uh, it came off of our screens now, I think. Pat. Oh, it did. Now you're looking at my swimming thing yep. and all the other. Okay, I'll leave it over there then, thanks. <laughs> um, it's um, it, it's it's a two pager. The top really has the the meat of the information about the background, and then the second page has the resources and 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 where to go. Um, and the the other thing, I mean, if if you're really interested in digging more into those resources, I mean, obviously you can look at them. There are links in the document itself, and and I'll post that in the chat here in a minute. Um, but um, there are links there, but also come back to us if you'd like more uh, a presentation about them or something like that. We can we can definitely do that for you. Um, so anyway, so I'm going to just just zone in a little bit uh, or zoom in a little bit. I might be zoned out at this time of the day. Um, what we're finding from our youth risk behavior survey, which is the high school survey that's done every two years. Um, the last one was done in 2019. We're actually going to miss a year this year because of the pandemic and do it again in 23. But we, about one in four of our high schoolers were vaping in the last 30 days um, in, in traditional high schools. Um, in, in alternative high schools, it's, it's significantly higher. Um, lots of kids have tried vaping. Uh, we were just talking a little bit with Michael ahead of time and you know, they're, they're seeing a lot of it. Um, schools are starting to contact us about vape detectors and some schools are putting them in uh, <clears throat> and just trying to figure out how, how to deal with this. And um, a, 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 as you look at um, the policies around tobacco, um, you know, one of the things that schools really do is they, they, they often suspend. And we did a little, little look um, at some data that Samantha actually manages over at the Department of Ed. And we found that in, in 2018, 19, which was the last time we had a full year of in-person you know, school, um, about 781 kids in the state were suspended either in school or out of school 
for tobacco use. And that's that's could be beyond vaping, but any sort of tobacco use. It's a lot of days out of school. Um, we know some districts do alternatives to suspensions around, around tobacco. And that's some of what we have here uh, for districts who don't have it or who want to expand into some other areas. Um, you know, so that when we when we we find kids using tobacco products, we can give them some education around it, uh, rather than suspend or you know I, I I suppose potentially do both. But anyway, to to respond in a way, we all know that absenteeism is a is a big issue um, that all schools are trying to um, to you, you know lower um, and absenteeism for whatever reason, including suspensions, is you know is an idea we want kids in seats where they can learn. Um, there's a, 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 lot of, um, uh, a lot of research around suspensions. Um, it, can, it can lead to these things here, um, early tobacco and other substance use, dropping out of school, disruptive behavior, like lying and theft. And um, we really want kids bonded to schools if, if possible. Um, and, and we're not saying that all suspensions are bad, but, but that the, these might provide an opportunity for some education. Um, so uh, there's some resources here, and then I'll move on to the next page. And um, this first one is the e-learning the e module that I talked about at the beginning. Um, you can link to it here. Sam and Annalise are gonna talk about it. The other thing is um, I, my background is, is mental health, and we've known for a long time that kids who experience mental health issues are more likely to use substances. Um, and nicotine and tobacco certainly are, are one of them. So we've included the Transforming Schools, a framework for trauma-engaged practice, just as really as an upstream uh, prevention for, for all sorts of substance use and, uh, and other issues. So that's a resource that's there. Um, and then Not Buying It, a, a public education campaign, and then these alternatives to suspensions, In-Depth and Healthy Futures, are, are there and again you can you can look there and then something to share with parents um, a live vape free um, it's there as well as some um, uh, teen texting uh, opportunities and, and Annalisa maybe at some point you could talk a little bit about that um, if, if possible when we're, we're going through that portion of the module and again we're not going to go through the whole module but anyway I will as as Sam starts to talk I'll drop the link to this in the chat, it's it's kind of a resource, um, maybe to to talk to people to get them interested in in, in tackling this issue and and thinking about it in maybe in a broader way. So um, I'm going to stop sharing there, and I will let Sam take over. Hey everyone. My name is Samantha Wilson and I'm with the Department of Education and Early Development. I'm the program coordinator uh, for the e-learning program. So today I'm just gonna show you how to access the system and then how to navigate it once you are logged in and how to find the vaping course. Just a moment here. Oh, Pat, can you enable sharing? I will do that, sorry about that. Try that. Okay. All right. Can you see my full screen there? Okay. All right. So this is the main Department of Education webpage. This is the home page. So I'm just going to show you how to quickly find it. There's a couple of quick links within the home page so you don't have to click around and dig and try to find it. Um, the first option is to put e-learning in the search box up here. Press search and it'll take you right there. The other option is if you scroll all the way down the page here, you can see we have a quick link located on the front page as well. So go ahead and click on here and it'll take you to our informational page. Um, on, on this page, you can find our contact information, our website, or excuse me, our email address and phone number. Um, myself, I can answer the phone and then we also have a few other staff members available to Help with logins um, and questions as well. We have a new e-learning quick start guide. This is really helpful to pass on to your staff or for yourself. Um, it's just something that you can save on your computer or print out and pass out, but it has links, contact information, and then just a couple of pages with pictures on how to navigate the system. 
All right, so let's go ahead and click login for training courses. Okay, so this is our main sign in page here. Um, we have our typical username, password, login box. All usernames will be an email address. We um, display any new courses that we have, our e learning support. Again, you can find our quick start guide and additional resources down here. And then the link to our new e-classroom, which houses courses for students, but to be facilitated by teachers. Um, so in order to access the system, you have to create a login. If you've had one in the past, you, but you can't remember your information, you can click the I forgot my password link, or you can contact email or call us um, and we can always get you in really quick as well. If you need to create an account, you can register here. It's a really simple, quick application with just your basic information, school district or organization, um, email address, stuff like that. We'll go ahead and sign in the system and then I'll show you how to find the course. All right, and here we are on my dashboard. So once you log in, you're directed to your personal e-learning page here called my dashboard. Um, this is where you'll find all of your enrollments. The majority of folks will, this section will be blank um, because you do have to self-enroll in courses, but obviously I've taken a lot of these or I'm constantly in there, so mine is pretty full. You'll also find all certificates. So after you complete a course, you'll receive a certificate of completion that you can either save as a PDF, print, or view. And then all of my previous courses that I've completed as well. And this is also printable. So if you need your staff to turn it in, um, or if you need to turn it into supervisors, you can do that. But in order to find the course, you have to go up here to the catalog. Okay, and so then we have 77 courses within our catalog. You can find all of them right here in all courses, but we also break them down by categories. Um, if you hover over the, the title here, then you can see the full thing. I've been working with the, the tech folks to try to fix this so that you can see the full name, but at this point it's not fixed yet. So um, if you hover over, then you can see the whole thing. There's a couple different ways to find your course. You can either use the search catalog, we'll say put in vaping. And we can find it either in the health and safety catalog, or we can go ahead and go directly to the course. Um, but just to show you guys a few of the other health and safety courses, we'll go ahead and click on the catalog. And then you can see that they're all listed here in alphabetical order but they range from domestic violence and sexual assault training for educators, pr prevention and awareness. Um, and then we have e-cigarette use among Alaskan teens. We have courses on opioids. We have a Narcan administration course. It's quick 15 minutes and that's really helpful for staff as well. But we'll go ahead and look into our e-cigarette use among Alaska teens here. So once you click on the course name, You'll find a little bit more information. You'll find the description. We have the estimated length of the course, so it's approximately 30 minutes. Um, the objectives. And then down here, you'll find a little bit more information. One thing I do like to point out is we have the course narration script. And this can be found on every single course, but this is a printable version of everything that's narrated within the script, or excuse me, narrated within the course. Um, but this is a nice option that if you find some information within the course that you want to refer to later on, but you don't want to have to log in and look for that specific page, you can just print this out and then maybe find that information right there. All right, so we'll, we'll enroll in the course. We have a little success box. Click here. I might can't, I don't know, can you guys see the click here to launch? Yep. Oh, okay, all of my the camera image is, is blocking it for me. Okay, so again, here you have your description, the length, and then the click here to launch. So you can do this. I just want to tell you guys, there's a couple of different ways to take this course. Um, you can have you or have your staff take it individually through their own personal accounts, and then they'll receive a certificate of completion on that account. But if this is something that you'd like to do as a group, maybe during an in-service, 
you can also just lo log in through one account and then maybe display it or, um, yeah, if, if you guys can even just do it all on the computer together. Um, but then that way that gives you guys the opportunity to stop on each screen and have a discussion or, you know, talk about things that have worked in your school or maybe some things that you need to work on. Um, and if you do want to do it as a group, what you would do is just contact me and then I can go ahead and load those certificates into those individual accounts. That way they have that for later use if they need it um, and it's on their course, their history as well. Um, from here, I'm going to let Annalisa go into the course, but are there any questions? All right, looks like you're up. Great, thanks, Sam. Uh, yeah, so my name is Annalisa Howland. Uh, I am the youth specialist for the state uh, tobacco control and prevention TBC program. And uh, today I'm gonna be providing an overview of that module of the uh, e-cigarette use among Alaska teens learning module. So let me just pull uh, it up on my screen. Okay, so you should be seeing some a lovely mountain range. All right, great. Uh, so this is what the actual module looks like. Um, you can see here on the left under menu, um, it really, it's a comprehensive, really itemized and detailed overview of what to expect in the course. Um, so we have objectives, lessons. Uh, this particular module, uh, like Pat said, it takes about 25, 30 minutes to complete. Uh, it is made up of five different lessons. Um, you can navigate the slides uh, throughout by, if you go to the very bottom, you see play button, um, next previous, that's to advance um, and to go back to a certain slide. Um, and it's really great too, if you, you know, you did the course and you remembered one thing, like, oh, I remember something about marketing to youth or something about flavors, instead of watching the whole thing again, you can go to the menu, click on the certain topic, and then it's right there for you. Um, and also even easier, like Sam mentioned, you can actually access the materials within this course at, on the actual, the, the page that launches the module. Um, but there's also a section in here where you can um, easily grab resources too. So there's more, more than one way to do it. Uh, so what I'm gonna do um, is I'm actually gonna go through a lesson. Um, I promise it's pretty painless, it's not that long, um, but I think it's just, it's the best way to just show you how this flows. Um, I do wanna mention before I press play, um, there's a knowledge check at the end of this lesson. Um, and the knowledge checks, they're actually at the, uh, it's a question, it's one question. Um, and it's at the end of each lesson and it's designed to assess your participants' uh, knowledge or understanding. Again, that should be also painless, uh, but just wanna give you the <laughs> FYI now. Um, wait a minute, wait a minute. It doesn't go on our permanent records? <laughs> no, I don't think so. And I'm pretty sure it's not on your certificate either, okay. but you may have to ask Sam about that. <laughs> No, it, I, I, it's yeah, all good fun. Uh, so I'm going to press play. And if you don't hear sounds, shake your head or say no, um, but hopefully it works. It should. Okay, here we go. So this is lesson three. Lesson three, preventing e-cigarette use in schools. E-cigarettes can look very similar to, and be mistaken for, everyday items. Take a moment to explore this student's desk. Select each item to find out if it's an e-cigarette product. So I really like, um, I'm going to just take a pause here, and I'm sorry about that, that is my son. Uh, he's learning um, that if you smack your hand on a surface, it makes a noise. Um, okay, so... Um, this, I really like this part of the e-module. Um, it really is an example of how interactive it can be. So not just with yourself, you know, break up the Montanomni and instead of reading or being talked at, you could kind of interact with this. Um, so if you actually go on here, you can click on which items you think is an e-cigarette product. Um, so we have different options here. And then if you click on one, it'll give you more info. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody wants to come off mute and maybe guess, or you could even use the handy dandy annotate button at the very top of your screen. Um, it looks like a little pencil. 
it's right next to the share. Um, you can use that to circle what you think may be a vape. Oh, I see Michael. Okay, so there is there is a really big hint right there. Oh, and I see Pat. Okay, so Pat, let's see. Could this possibly be an e-cigarette? Oh wait, no, he's saying no. Well, let's just let's make sure. You never know. Okay, so clicked on it. It's not. It is just a pencil sharpener. All right. Um, oh, I see another one. Pam, yes. Okay, let's see. This device is called a tank or a mod. Yes, these are rechargeable and are refillable with e-juice or e-liquid. Absolutely, good eye. I see a partial one here. I think that's also Pam. I'm gonna click on it. This is just a flash drive. However, vapes or USB chargers for vapes can look almost like nearly identical to flash drives. Right, so they actually, even though this one pictured here isn't, I don't know, it's kind of like a trick question, but um, they can look like that. They absolutely can just straight look like it. So, oh yeah, oh see, Michael has an example right here. That is a vape or is it a USB drive? It's really convincing. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for indulging me in this exercise. Um, I think it's fun, so, <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll get things going with the next, the next slide. If I can, Oops, sorry. And play, would you like to play? Uh oh, oh, I'm sorry. Next. It's next, yeah. you're <laughs> The e-cigarette industry is constantly evolving. E-cigarettes have rapidly changed shapes from vape pens to mods to discrete pod to disposable devices. Since e-cigarettes come in many different shapes and sizes, it is hard to identify what is a vape or vape accessory and what isn't. To learn more about the different types of e-cigarettes, please select the More Info button for visual guides. So this is also really a neat tool within this e-module, this nice more button. You can find it in a lot of these um, slides. So you click on that and it's hyperlinks to really important information, very relevant tobacco facts, Pat just went over. Um, we also have some um, info from the CDC and Truth Initiative. Um, and, you know, as we progress and like this uh, slide even says, the tobacco industry is constantly evolving. Um, and, you know, so are we. So definitely this information we look to update over time um, with new resources and information. If you come across a student with a vape or vape juice in school, it's important to retrieve the item from the student and not return it to them. These items can be donated to your local State of Alaska Tobacco Prevention and Control grantee or given to a local authority to dispose of. From there, Reference your school's policy for addressing tobacco violations. Here's an image of confiscated e-cigarettes and juices during a locker sweep at a high school in Alaska in 2019. Thank you to our partners at the American Lung Association for providing this image. Yeah, so this just brings it home of how much these vapes look like everyday objects or can look like everyday objects. So. Um, Yes, thanks ALA for this picture. I use it a lot in the presentations I give. Um, and again, another click, you can get um, more information at our webpage, um, the state webpage, uh, or email tobacco at alaska.gov. You can also contact, like Pat said himself, and um, also myself, first name, last name at alaska.gov um, for more information. Yeah, and, and, and so one of the ways the system that the tobacco team has set up is they have grantees around the state that support communities. And so by going there, if, if you don't already have a relationship with your um, community provider, um, that, that's a way just to connect with them. And, and they often can provide a lot of this material, even offer some, you know, curriculum support or or whatever uh, around that. So it's, it's worth developing that partnership um, if you don't have it already. And I know, in, for example, in Sitka, there you guys are tuned in to each other. So it's good for sure. Yes, thanks, Pat. Yeah, um, and if you happen, yeah, to not know if there's a 
a grantee in your area, reach out to us. Um, we can see if there's one um, in that service area. If by any chance there's not, the state definitely will step in and we can help you directly. Um, but yes, they are a really great resource, grassroots level, um, providing really great TPC information. And they'd be more than happy to connect with you. For your school to successfully prevent students from using tobacco products and e-cigarettes on campus, it's important to have a comprehensive tobacco-free policy implemented and maintained. For guidance on school tobacco-free policies, select the More Information button. Here again, we have more, uh, and there's even more relevant information. We have um, information directly for Alaska. Uh, so we have school districts in Alaska. I'm not sure all aware of that, but um, uh, we have model policies from our partners at American Lung Association. Uh, again, really great information here. During the 2018 and 2019 school year, 781 students were suspended for tobacco use, which led to more than 1,800 days of missed classroom instruction. When examining race, Alaska Native students are disproportionately suspended for tobacco use. Looking at grade levels, 8th graders face the most out-of-school suspensions for tobacco use. This is a really great slide to illustrate the prevalence uh, among Alaska and also, um, Alaska Native population as well. Um, if we click here, source, think feed. Um, so this is facts that really accompany that fact sheet as well, um, just illustrating the point that there is a high prevalence uh, within the state. Programs that offer an alternative to suspension are encouraged for when a student is caught with tobacco or e-cigarette products at school. Rather than suspension or expulsion, an alternative program is intended to offer an educational component to help students learn about e-cigarettes and encourage them to stop using them. To learn more about the benefits of alternative to suspension programs, as well as various types of programs available for schools, see the resources in the More Information button. Yep, so resources in the More, there's also that information in the fact sheet, like uh, Pat went over, um, so two really great spots to kind of start off when you are interested in learning more about alternatives to suspension. Mr. Hansen wants to see an item that he notices in Jake's backpack. When Jake hands it to him, Mr. Hansen confirms that it's a vape. What is his best response? Okay, so hopefully this question just doesn't completely fry your brain and <laughs> and it's not too horrible. Um, but again, each lesson they're gonna you're gonna see a knowledge check in here. It's just a, a question referring back to what you just learned. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to come off mute, if they want to say one. Um, I'm going to call these A, B, and C. So if you even don't want to read the whole thing, you can say A, B, or C. <laughs> um, but C. C? We kind of shaking our heads, consensus. Let's... I agree. All right, C. And it, they say C is usually it, right? At least when I was in school, they, they would say if you went in doubt, guess see. <laughs> I don't know if that was just my school or if that, I don't know. Uh, okay. Now we all stop and update our if resume. If you come across a student with a oh. vape or vape juice in school, it's important to retrieve the item from the student and not return it to them. Follow your school's policies for next steps. Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Pat, but yes, correct. You are correct. And then it tells you why you're correct. So that's just, that's one lesson. It would have been way shorter if lesson I wasn't, four. you know, interrupting. Uh, so really great resource. Um, Pat had mentioned earlier too about doing it in groups. If you want to connect with your TPC grantee, um, we actually showed them this uh, e-module and they were really excited and they were thinking of ways um, to do outreach and they would love to meet with school staff and counselors and walk you through it. They are just a wealth of knowledge and they would kind of just go through it like I did and provide supplemental information, um, even regional information, um, which is really helpful. So 
uh, a really great resource, not only for, you know, school staff, administrators, teachers, but uh, everyone all around. So um, I, there's a lot in here. I can kind of slowly go down. Is there anything in particular you're interested in? This kind of covers all things e-cigarette. So um, we have what is an e-cigarette all the way to what's a comprehensive school policy in marijuana use. So um, I'm not sure if anyone at this time had any questions at all. And if not, I know Pat, you mentioned uh, maybe going quickly over Live Vape Free. Yeah, if you've got a, a little bit of information on that, just real quick, and then maybe we'll we'll get out here a little early and let people start their evening. Yeah, and it's, um, before I transition to the Live Vape Free program, um, if anyone has any questions about module, walking things through, learning more about a, a local TPC grantee, um, please reach out to me. Annalisa.howland at alaska.gov or go through Pat and he'll get to me. Uh, I am more than happy to, to connect with you. So just give me a moment and I'll switch gears uh, for Live Vape Break. While you're doing that, I just wanted to uh, thank Michael for being on. Um, I am the grantee for um, the Kenai School District. And um, uh, I don't know if any of the other attendees today are from our district, but um, I know I really appreciate what Michael's doing out there at Nikiski, uh, especially this year, since I haven't been available as much to get out there for our last two years because of COVID and et cetera. But thanks, Mike. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's awesome. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so you should see Live Vape Free PowerPoint. Do we see that? Do we see a black background or is it just a white background? Just white, okay. Um, I just wanna make sure I was in the right view. Uh, so Live Aid Free, uh, Live Aid Free is a youth focused program. Um, it's actually twofold. There's a parent portion of Live Aid Free and there is a team portion of Live Aid Free. Uh, so what Live Aid Free, it's a youth focused program. Again, it offers uh, guidance and education um, that empowers parents to have constructive conversations with their teens um, about the risks, health harms associated with vaping. Um, this is actually a program that's offered through our Alaska Tobacco Quit Line, um, completely free uh, again. And uh, the parent is very similar. The parent program is very similar to what we just looked at, like the e-module. It's a self-paced online course, um, and it really helps guide that conversation. So we're having healthy conversations with our teens. Um, so that is something that we've definitely been promoting um, for parents that have been interested or parents or caregivers who are interested in learning more about what this vaping is. Um, and then conversely, the Live Vape Free Teen Program, that's also an educational program. Um, it's interactive. It's actually a texting program, completely free. It's a texting program for teens. Um, so the teens, um, they text this number. It's actually on this next slide here. Um, so they text vape free to 873-373 um, and they text vape free and they can receive information on the health harms associated with e-cigarette use. Um, if they're trying to quit, they get mindful texts that include like distractions or ways to substitute their uh, e-cigarette use. Um, so they offer different behaviors um, and just it helps teens stay motivated and engaged in their in their quitting journey. Um, so I'm going to drop a link in the chat box. It's actually to our not buying it campaign, which uh, Pat also he pointed out. It's, um, we reference it in the um, fact sheet. Um, so, the, yeah, that's a health Alaska health campaign um, that's going on. 
Um, the web page, I'll send it to you. It has information on both of these, um, the parent focused and the teen focused um, sides of Live Date Free. Um, and while you're on the not buying it campaign, there's a bunch of other information, just so much um, info. Um, and they even categorize it. So you can look at resources for teens, resources for educators, resources for parents and caregivers. Um, so if you wanna go on there, learn more about Be Live Vape Free, you can learn about much other really great information. So I am gonna drop that in the chat box. Now that was kind of just a, my short little spiel about Live Vape Free, but um, oops, I meant to stop share, but I stopped myself, okay. Um, is there any questions about, about that program at all, Live Vape Free? Yeah, okay. Great, thanks, Annalisa, for, for doing that. Um, and Karen, we'll follow up with you and get you connected with, uh, with your local, um, with your local uh, tobacco prevention grantee. So that's great. Are there any other questions? It's a lot to digest. There's a ton of information there. The e-learning e modules, Annalisa said, is, is built to be adaptable. Um, those more buttons, you know, can be updated, you know, regularly. And so that as things change, um, the, as things change, we'll uh, be able to update those so so the information in the module will will be up to date um, as well. So anyway, if that's all, I think we could all just maybe head for home. Sounds good. Thanks thanks so much for joining us and um, have a good evening.